Today we're going to talk about or cover the topic of teaching the planner to dance is what we call it. And again today it's uh, May 16th and we're just getting started planning. Conditions in this field are really too wet. How much can we manage with the planner to still get this field planned and get a good stand of corn? Now this field was leveled yesterday with a vertical harrow just knocking the peaks into the valley so we're level enough to plant. But below this it's actually muck. And we're going to look at that and say, well, how can we plant that today? Well, one thing right off the bat, realize that this dry real estate here on the surface is very important. It's got to stay there. So our row cleaners can push some of the larger pieces out of the way. Some of the residue can be pushed out of the way. But that dry soil has got to stay put for our depth wheels to run on top of because below this, it's mucky. And we're going to try to plant into this muck and we got to stay on top of it and push the seed into the muck itself. So I can ball this up and into a, a mud wad and it's going to ribbon over my hand. This is going to be a, a challenge to plant. But if we stay light enough on our feet, and we'll talk about the settings on the corn planter today that allow us to do that, we stay on top of the dry soil, we slip that seed into this uh, wet, mucky stuff down below, and then try to get that slot closed. Okay, so of course, no matter what the monitors say, no matter um, how things are going out there, you've got to get off that planter and you've got to look to see what the planter is telling you. Today we're planting in really, really tough conditions, so we're doing everything we can to make this planter, as we say, dance. So we'll dig down in here and find a seed, of course, and then what I want to do is sneak up to the next seed. So I like to cut a cross cut through the furrow this way to see how that seed lays in its original spot. Today you can see over here, for instance, this slot is where the uh, Gen 2 starter colder is running off to the side, so we have that slot. And this is our furrow, and as we rake across that furrow, I'd like to see enough tail pressure that the furrow stands up. Of course, that's not going to be a problem today because we're planting in some pretty tough conditions. And I like to find that seed in its kind of original spot. And there he is, tucked in there pretty nice, in a situation where we're looking at about an inch and three quarters to two inches in depth and no real indication of how he got there. So no open slot all the way to the top. Situation where we're tucked in there pretty good. I don't have a furrow wall showing on either side. Uh, I've got this thing closed from the bottom up. So there's no dry soil around the base of that seed and there's no visible slot above it. And I'm maintaining my depth. In this case, we were getting an uh, inch and three quarter to two inch depth zone on this planter. Uh, percent contact was in the mid to high 90s. Today we're planting in some pretty tough planting conditions as you can see how wet this soil is. And the only way we can do that is think about all aspects of staying on top of this dry soil, tucking the, the seed in the moisture below. If we get too aggressive with our row cleaner and wipe out all this dry soil, then we start here and we're tucking that seed even another inch or two down. And of course, as you can imagine, the deeper we go here, the wilder things are going to get from a seedbed situation. So we get down into here and it even makes that planting tougher. So again, we're, our target is in that inch and three quarter, two inches in depth. This is where we want to be with that seed in that moisture. We don't want to be lower than that as we get into that tough conditions uh, just right below it where we're really going to be working with moisture. In order to stay here and run here, this has to stay in place. That top real estate, that dry ground has to stay there, we're tucking it in here. That means row cleaners have to be very light, meaning all we're doing is moving big clods and boulders and things like that out of the way, but we're not moving this dry soil. The other thing is, is our downforce on the planter has to be as light as we can carry it so we don't smack this in. So this is my footprint where the planter's running and I'm carrying as little a downforce as I can to keep this planter in the ground. That keeps me from smearing or causing a slot here in these wet conditions that we're talking about as far as planting into it. Then follow up, we got to have good closure from the bottom up and that's going to be a function of your closing wheels. In this case we're running two cast iron closing wheels in a staggered position and they're doing a phenomenal job of closing this up behind it. So again, I'm very comfortable with planting in this moist of a condition um, because of the way we have this planter set. We'll now go look at the planter and dig into those settings again. So again, one of the main reasons that we're able to plant in the conditions that we're planting in today 
is actually technology. The technology has been added to these planters. It's a big part of how we can make them dance even smoother uh, than we could before. And again, one of the first steps we're going to look at is how do we clean the residue out of the way but not move the soil, and that has to come to the setting of the row cleaner. So as we look at this row cleaner, for instance, um, a very unique row cleaner. It's set up on parallel linkage, floats straight up and down. We got our depth band wheel, we got our spoke wheels, our spoke tines here. And these are going to go in the ground, break a crust, move some residue out of the way, but, but the depth bands are going to keep us from going too deep. And unique to this is we have a down bag and an up bag for the air pressure. So we can put so much down force and so much up force to kind of keep this as a floating row cleaner sensitive to the ground. That's probably key in this situation is we got to be very sensitive that we're not flushing soil out of here. We're just moving a little bit of dust, clods, and residue, keeping the dry stuff on top. And it's a, a lot easier to do it with the row cleaner like this Yetter outfit right here. There's a number of them on the market that have depth wheels with air down force. This close coupled system on a parallel linkage eliminates the need for our coulter between the row cleaner. We can do all the tillage we want here with the row cleaner and no-till. Of course, we don't need to do much here in the vertical till. So a lot of this technology is making the colder obsolete, and that colder tends to bring up that wet soil that we don't want to be into and stick it to things uh, throughout the unit itself. So we need this on the front or this technology if we got it. If we don't and you just have a regular row cleaner, you've got to carry it. You've got to carry it as light as possible. Sometimes the wheels may not even be turning just when they come, a come against a root ball or something like that. But you've got to stay high with the row cleaner. Don't let this plow out the dry soil. That's number one for the biggest problem when we're trying to make this planter dance. Then we're going to look at the downforce. So number two in teaching the planter dance is your downforce. We want to carry the least amount of downforce we can and still maintain mid 90, 95% ground contact. Now here today we have a hydraulic downforce on this planter which each row uh, operates by itself as far as how much downforce it's going to put on or how much lift it's going to put on. For us to do what we're doing here today we are actually carrying these row units so most of the time we're picking up almost a hundred pounds on this unit and we got a low set of seed in here we're keeping this row unit light we have no insecticide so there's not a lot of weight in the unit but that is enough to be too much downforce in these wet conditions. So this hydraulic cylinder is actually picking up 100 pounds off of this unit to keep us light enough at the disc opener so we don't smear and we can close that in. So here it shows we're lifting up on the row units all the way across. We're just trying to maintain our ground contact somewhere in that low 90s to mid 90s range. We want that planter skimming across the top of the ground uh, as we put it in so that we're, we're maintaining the ground contact best we can but we're not adding any pressure to that soil. It's allowing us to plant in a lot of very uh, marginal conditions as we start off here in Illinois. Now, if you don't have hydraulic both ways and you just got air pressure down or spring pressure down, again, you're going to go to the lightest setting and it may be just the unit uh, weight of the unit itself that would hold it in. But with the new technology today, we can actually start lifting. So we go into the tougher parts of the field where we need to take that weight off, the planter will do that automatically. That's where this technology really pays. Now, with downforce comes speed. The faster you run in the planter, the more downforce it takes to get in. So these high-speed planters, in order to get our downforce light enough so we can plant in these tough conditions, we may have to slow down. So as we back the speed down on the planter, you'll see the percent contact on your monitor go up. Tells you this planter's staying in the ground, then get behind and dig. So you may have to come away from that 9, 10 mile an hour planting and come back into that 5 to 6 mile an hour in the high-speed situation so it doesn't demand so much downforce to hold this thing in. But as light as we can walk this without the seed getting shallow. That's number two. Number three is going to be the closing system. So here in the closing system, we're actually running two cast wheels today. And they're in a staggered position. Usually they're in a staggered position, just one hole off. So they're slightly off. This is the uh, Gen 2 from Shafford Manufacturing, which really staggers them and puts them in a kind of a tandem axle format uh, going through the field and that uh, uh, gives us better closing yet. So I like the fact that I'm crushing that sidewall up there, crushing this sidewall back here, of course putting our fertilizer on right here. Then we have to adjust uh, the downforce to carry enough downforce to make sure we close it from the bottom all the way to the top. We started out today in number one that wasn't getting it closed clear at the bottom, so we had to go to number two and that did a fantastic job. 
making sure your closing system is centered right behind that disc opener. So we'll be pushing the same amount of soil from each side in and closing it from the bottom up. So again, the closing wheel's gonna be a big part of this picture. We still gotta have that slot closed when we're talking about corn. We can't have open sidewall. We didn't see any smearing out there from the disc opener due to the precision hydraulic downforce that we're using, keeping it light and a good crushing of the closing system. One more added feature that I like is a scraper on the depth wheel. So in this case, we're running a set of scrapers on here and it keeps the uh, moist spots in the field from building up. If we build up on that depth wheel, of course, we're gonna change the depth. These scrapers, um, while well, you have to be careful because they sometimes the only way farmers know when to quit is when the depth wheels are building up with mud. In this case, they're not going to. But in these conditions, like we are today, uh, it lets you start earlier in the day and it lets you run longer in the day. Before that moisture uh, gets off in the morning, you could be running because that damp soil doesn't bother these. And if you're going through that 20% of the field that we're pushing, we don't have to worry about mud building up. So I am a proponent of scrapers to keep the wheel clean, keep our depth there, along with this closing system. Put all that together, you can teach your planner how to dance.